keeping your students safe is fundamental to the educational process. You have safety plans in place for many potential threats to their well-being, fires, tornadoes, and other natural or man-made disasters. But do you know your school policies regarding a student that is considering suicide? Does your school have a plan to address the suicide death of one of your students? Suicide is the second leading cause of death for our youth and young adults in Kentucky. According to the Youth Risk Behavior Survey, nearly 20% of our high school youth have seriously considered suicide during the past 12 months, and more than 8% have made a suicide attempt. When a student or several students from a school actually die by suicide, it can be catastrophic and seriously impede the educational process for surviving students. I recently spoke with three high school principals, school staff members, and others about the devastating impact suicide had on their schools and their lives. One day, Rachel and her sister came in to see me and brought in a stack of MySpace postings and emails with a lot of threats that just had her nervous about being at school. There were several references that you better watch your back and as you're walking here and you're walking there I'm going to get you the references that had been made about putting her in the morgue so she was obviously very concerned for her safety but wanted to be at school so as the principal I felt it's my job to make sure you're safe at school so that's where we embarked upon a plan to make sure from the time she got to school to the time she got on the bus that she was safe. And I got the phone call that one of our students had, uh, had died that night. Certainly the worst call you ever want to get. And then my coach told me that just the first name, said the girl's name was Rachel. And it hit me like a knife through my heart that this was the girl that we'd been working to try and protect. And just a world of emotions ran through me like, you know, is there something else we could have done? Was, was this our fault? Where did we go wrong? All those questions. The impact that I had that was left on me and our family was a gaping hole that I don't think will ever be mended. When Rachel died, um, it basically, like Mark said, tore a hole in our family. Just a, that's such a devastating loss. All the questions started throwing around like, what do I say, what do I don't say? Do we do a memorial? Uh, how do I tell the students? How do I talk to the parents? What do I say to the press? At that point in time, we brought in some our district psychologists and social workers, as well as our school counselors. A couple of counselors from within the district that had grief counseling training came in. You know, students were upset. Um, those who knew her well were very upset. Those who knew her by association or by you know being in class with her. Never in my wildest dream would I have thought we'd face it again. Almost six months to the day, uh, Rachel's good friend Kristen took her life also. And at that point in time, that's when my personal world started to fall apart, when I realized uh, I don't have a grasp on what I should be doing, I don't think. I, I felt we'd done a lot of good things and handled things right. We would be in the office and there would be parents coming in saying, you know, what do we do? what is going on? How would I know? You know, because my friend didn't know and that happened to their child. And at that point we went outside as a mental health professional. We brought in seven counties, um, mental health services from Bullock County to help with us. We brought other people from around the state that had some background in suicide prevention and be able to say these are some steps you ought to take, this is what you ought to do, you probably don't want to do this, and then went forward with a little bit more of a formalized plan of how to reach students, parents, community. We helped cover classes if needed so for teachers that you know had experience or had relationships with students that could work with students. Or we actually talked with students ourselves, providing support in that since we had, you know, I have counseling background, I have a school counseling uh, degree. We set up a, a mentoring buddy system after our, after our first suicide, we focused on the close group of friends surrounding Rachel. After the second suicide, we realized that its tentacles were further out into the school, into the community. I think the staff really just tried to wrap their arms around the students and tried to be there, be a support for them. Um, of course, at some point, they've got to take care of themselves, too. 
for my faculty, we brought in training for QPR, for question, persuade, and refer for all of our faculty to be able to identify a student who might be in crisis and be able to ask a difficult question, or are you thinking of killing yourself, and then knowing how to persuade them to get help and, and who to refer them to. And we trained about 80% of our faculty uh, in that strategy, as well as just having some education about suicide itself. Every year kids go to different schools and one of our students uh, chose to go to uh, another school in the district and then six months from the date of Kristen's death uh, she committed suicide as well. This never ever will be the same for my family, my boys, her brothers, and her friends. Wish I would have seen the warning signs. Wish I could have saved her. It hit me at that time that we had a lot of things in place at our school, but there's 20 other schools just in Bullock County alone. And then it started to hit me more of a global perspective that you can't just have one little pocket doing something, that these kind of programs need to be in every single school. I'd been a principal for a while had had lots of deaths of students to car accidents, but had never had a suicide before. And it was a very difficult experience uh, because of all the different factors that came into play from the community and within the school. And it was the beginning of what seemed to be uh, a series of suicides in Grant County. Uh, it was like they were happening almost every, every six months. You get to wondering, well, was there something that I could have done? What should I have known to have been prepared for this? And then you go through the phase as a principal of wondering, what do I need to do to help my staff to know how to see the signs and how to let us know when things happen? And it's just, you go through a lot of anxiety, a lot of frustration, uh, you cry a lot. You know, in, in school districts, we have plans for everything. We've got binders on my desk for every safety plan known to mankind. We have Soft lockdowns, we have hard lockdowns, we have active shooters in the building, we have angry parents in the building, we got chemical spills, you got plane crashes, you got tornado drills, you got earthquake drills. You know, you, you practice drill for everything, but nobody ever talks about what do you do if a student dies, or worse yet, what do you do if you have a student who commits suicide? There just isn't a plan or any training for that. It's just a terrible tragedy. We, we lost three young girls in a one year period. And I feel like if there were programs already in place at school that we could have saved them. If I had had a plan in place before the first one, I think it would have been much easier to handle. Not that a situa situation like that is ever easy but you would at least know what you need to have in place. You, you would know that you need to brief your staff immediately when something like this happens. You would know that you need to have a, the crisis team already organized. Suicide has affected uh, our school uh, since I've been here for over 20 years in many different ways. Uh, actually, we've had students that have committed suicide. We've had the rumors of students who died that may have committed suicide, and then we've had students who have been dealing with the death of a friend and wondered if it was suicide. I saw students who weren't sure how to react. They went through the stages of grief that we know about, but they also you know, would come up with questions and, and not knowing why, and why would someone do that? You know, why didn't they do something to help prevent it? Why, you know, why didn't we see the signs, that kind of thing. This isn't something that it really is that difficult to prepare for. It takes several hours to train an administrator, to train your staff, to be able to be to handle something head on. It's not the matter of having to take 10 or 12 or 15 hours of training. You can do two or three hours to get people to understand how to deal with it. But it needs to start at the top and be a, be a focus of, of a district or at least a school. We're looking at educating people, not just here in the building, but outside. We need every resource. I think it's important for everyone to know it's not a school issue. It's a community issue. I decided I wanted to get QPR into the schools because um, one of 
one of the events that led up to that was we had several one suicide and several attempts in the high school and graduating year um, out of that school and uh, that that was a huge it, it impacted our community just greatly and and you have to start you have to start educating people on on how how to st how to slow it down how to stop it how to prevent it and and that's that's part of, and it, it, it starts in the school system, it starts with the kids. The Signs of Suicide program for middle and high school youth is an evidence-based program. It combines education and awareness of depression and suicidal thinking, teaching students the importance of telling a trusted adult when they feel that a friend might be in crisis. And it includes some basic screening components. Research shows that this program changes student behavior. Implementing the Signs of Suicide program dramatically increases help seeking and reduces suicide attempts. The main teaching tool is a video which provides scenarios of positive ways for students to respond to a friend in crisis. This is a gatekeeper's one stop, one step uh, to helping these kids help each other when it comes to identifying whether or not their friend is in trouble. Students most definitely need to be trained on how to deal with their friends when they have this sort of situation. Having the SOS program in our schools is, is huge. The first people that kids talk to are their friends. And so that's the biggest piece is, is talking to the kids and parents being involved and knowing what's going on with their kids. You have to show them that, hey, this, this isn't the only way out. This isn't this isn't the thing to do. You know there are other there are other ways to to help with your problems. We need to be able to make sure we have whatever program in place. Be it the signs of suicide program, be it QPR for teachers. Being a part of SOS programs by making sure that more teens have resources available, uh, education materials, and by you know making sure that it's not something we never talk about until it happens. If you don't have kids feeling safe and emotionally secure they can't learn and ultimately our job is to teach them to learn. Putting these programs and protocol into place may provide more than a safe environment in your school. Suicide related lawsuits are increasing. Experts say that well documented training and crisis planning may reduce legal liability by increasing effective risk management. Just because it hasn't happened in your school doesn't mean it won't happen. I think we have a, a lot of responsibility here, uh, not only to the students in our school, but also to the families who have lost loved ones. I think it needs to start from, from the top with boards of education and with superintendents to understand that this has a huge impact on the effectiveness of your school. When all adults and students in our school communities are committed to making suicide prevention a priority and are empowered to take positive action, lives can be saved. Find out how to take action in your school. It's a matter of life and death.